Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at share based payment. This topic is covered in international accounting course, the CPA exam, as well as the ACCA exam. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. This is my channel. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. Please like my lectures if you like them share them put them in playlist let the world know about them if they're benefiting you it means they might benefit other people share the wealth this is my instagram account as i'm trying to grow my instagram please follow me on instagram this is my facebook and this is my website on my website if you like the channel you would like to support the channel i do have a donation button please feel free to support the channel also on my website you can find offers for my subscribers right now. Becker CPA Review is offering $1,000 off of their Becker Bundle CPA exam, which is the gold standard in CPA preparation, all four parts of the exam. Also, you will have unlimited access. As long as you need it, you will have access to it, which is that's very unusual that Becker does give this option, but it is available now. Also, if you are not studying for your CPA exam now, if you are still a college student, Becker CPA prep course would allow you to supplement your college studies with thousands of multiple choice questions, exercises, and simulations, as well as hundreds of hours by Becker faculty lectures. Let's talk about share-based payment, which is covered in IFRS 2. Let's look at the big picture first. What is the big picture? The big picture is when you, when the company, let's assume this is the company, this is the company, the entity when the company wants to purchase something they pay cash so we'll give cash and we'll buy what we need to buy and the other party provide their goods or services that's generally speaking how transactions are settled guess what sometime rather than giving cash maybe we don't have cash maybe we have cash would like to preserve the cash we want to pay with some sort of an equity instrument equity instrument give them stocks give them stock appreciation right give um, stock options to our employees. So this is what we are dealing with here. So rather than paying with cash for goods and services, we're gonna be paying with some sort of an equity instrument. So IFRS 2, which is the share-based payment, sets out measurement principle, how do we measure the transaction, and specific requirement for the three type of share-based payment transaction. The first one is equity settled share-based payment transaction. What is equity settled? It means the entity received the goods, or services as a consideration for equity instrument of the entity, including stock options granted to employee. Simply put, we receive the goods, we give something other than cash. So we don't give cash, we give something other than cash. We could give stock options. For example, we can pay our employees with stock option. Another form of share-based payment is cash settled share-based transaction. Notice this is equity settled. It means you're going to pay them actually with equity. Here you're going to pay them with cash. Now the cash is based on some equity measurement. So basically, entity acquired goods or services by incurring liabilities to the supplier. Obviously, yes, we incur a liability of those goods or services for the amount that are based on the price of the entity shares or other equity of the entity, which is share appreciation right. Simply put, you'll tell them, I'm going to pay you based on my stock price. So I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you 100 share, appreci share appreciation right, 100 shares. And depending how much the share is, when the time is due, I will pay you. If the share is $5, I will have to end up paying you $500. Okay, that's the second, that's the second option. The third shared based payment plan is a choice of share based pay, share based share based payment. What does that mean? It means you could either settle it in cash or you can settle it in equity. So terms of the arrangement provide either the entity or the supplier. So either the entity can choose the form of the payment or the supplier with the choice whether the entity settle the transaction in cash or issuing stock. So simply put, the entity can have that option or the supplier can have that option. And what's the option? So we have the entity here, the company, and the entity said we're gonna settle it in cash or we're gonna settle this when equity. Or that option is given to the supplier and the supplier says I wanna be paid in cash or the supplier say I'm gonna settle it in equity, okay? So, the, and we're gonna look at each one of those, you know, one, two, three, in detail. That's the purpose of the lesson, but this is just an introduction. So IFRS 2 applies to share-based transaction with both employees and non-employees and require the entity to recognize all share-based transaction in its financial statements, no exception. Simply put, 
the share based transaction they could be between you and your employees or between you and outside party non employees we're going to be using the fair value approach what does it what does it mean the fair value it means we're going to be recorded the transaction based on the fair value now in some situation we're going to be using these transaction are recognized at the fair value of the goods and services obtained in another situation, we're going to base the fair value on the equity of the instrument awarded or granted. So simply put, what does that mean? So sometime, and we're going to look at each situation separately, sometime we use this is the equity instrument. Sometime we look at the equity instrument, the fair value of the equity instrument, and we record the transaction based on the fair value of the equity instrument. Other times, in other situation, we're going to look at the situation differently. We're going to look at the fair value of what we received and that's going to be the fair value of the transaction. Let's go ahead and get started. We have a list. We're going to start with number one. Equity settled share based transaction. This is one of three. One of the three we're going to be covering. Okay. So again, this is share based payment transaction entered into by an entity that will be settled by the entities issuing equity are accounted for as equity transaction. Typically, what do we do is we debit either an asset or an expense, depending on what we provided. So simply put, we debit an expense or asset depending what we obtained and we credit some sort of paid in capital and common stock this is basically what it boils down to so we issued stocks for something either an expense or an asset okay now we have to differentiate when we have those we're going to differentiate between when we when we have equity settled share based payment to employees and to non employees. So we have to know are we dealing with employees? It's treated differently than when we deal with non employees. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to break section one into whether this share based payment to a non employee, we're going to start with non employee, think of non employee as creditors, they don't they don't have to be creditors, anyone that's not an employee is non employee, I'm just going to think of it as creditors, this way you are familiar with like, okay, I'm, I'm buying goods and services from my creditors from my suppliers. Okay, suppliers, not creditors, suppliers, I meant to say. So you measure the transaction at the fair value of the goods received. That's the first thing you have to know. What does that mean? It means you are dealing with non-employees. You would look at the goods that they gave you and you're going to use the fair value of those goods. Usually that's given. If the fair value of those goods cannot be determined, then the fair value of the equity instrument of use. So if the fair value of the goods that they're selling you, we, we cannot determine the fair value, then what we do is we use our fair value. One of them should be known, okay? So if the fair value of the instrument is used, of the equity instrument is used, the measurement date, so when do we measure it, is the date the entity obtained the goods or the service. So when do we record the transaction? Well, we're gonna look at when, when, when did we obtain the goods or the services? At what day? And based on that date will be the value of the transaction. If the goods or services are received on a number of dates over a period, so we received some goods here, some goods here, some goods here, a different date. So it's going to be 115, 23, 215. Okay, guess what? We're going to, for this transaction, we're going to figure out what's the fair value of, of the instrument on that date, what's the fair value of the instrument on that date, what's the fair value of the instrument on that date. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, under US GAAP, under US GAAP, so let me just show you how US GAAP work. Under US GAAP, we always start with the fair value of the instrument. So if we're giving equity to someone, if we're giving equity, we always say the value of the transaction is the value of our equity. Now, if you don't know the value of our equity, then we would look at the other party. But notice here, with the non-employee, we look at the other party fair value. Okay? So the seller, the earlier, and the, the earlier of either the date, at which a commitment for the performance is reached or when the performance is completed is used as a measurement date for determining the fair value of the instrument. So this is under gap when the date that we measure the instrument. Okay. So this is important. Now we're going to look at share based payment to employees. So again, share based payment, but employees are treated a little bit differently. It's measured at the fair value of the equity instrument on the grant date. So notice now we are giving stock options to our employees. What's, what is the employee giving us back? Well, services. They're working for the company. When we measure the, when we measure the transaction, we use the equity instrument, just like US GAAP does. Okay? So the entity issuing stock option must estimate the number of options expected to vest. What does that mean? It means we might be giving them 1,000 options, but they don't all vest means we may end up vesting 600. Why? Because some employees leave. Maybe the options are not worth anything. So we have to know how much are they giving them and how much do we expect the vest to actually materialize. Okay. 
The product of the number of options expected to vest multiplied by the fair value is the total compensation cost that will be recognized over the compensation expense. Simply put, if we're given them 1,000 options and we expect the fair value of these options to be $10, so we have a compensation expense of 10,000. Now, when do, we, when do we recognize those compensation expense over the vesting period? Let's assume the vesting period of two, is two years. We're going to use the straight line for the simplicity. We're going to recognize 5,000 of expense and 5,000 expense. Now, maybe I should define what a stock option is because I'm just throwing this word out. What is a stock option? Let's assume you are hired by Amazon. So let's assume you are hired for, hired for Amazon. Amazon might give you stock options. What is stock options? For example, Amazon might say, I'm going to give you 1,000 options to buy the stock at $2,500, okay? The stock right now is approximately $1,700, okay? So what is the option worth? It's worth zero. It's not worth anything. Why? Because the price right now is just Seventeen hundred. Why would you buy? Why would you buy the stock price at twenty five hundred if you can buy it at seventeen hundred? But what's the goal of the options? The goal of the option is if you work for the company and you work hard, you drive the stock price up more than twenty five hundred, and for every dollar above twenty five hundred, you make a thousand dollar profit. So that's that's how the stock options work. So the company will have to estimate how many options will be exercised times the fair value of those options and this is going to be the total compensation expense okay cost should be revised throughout the vesting period with corresponding adjustment to compensation expense so what happens sometime the some some employees leave so what's going to happen compensation expense will go down as compensation expense is recognized it's offset by an increase in additional paid in capital what does that mean it means when you recognize stock options you're going to debit an expense initially and you're going to credit capital or an equity account simply put an equity account go, goes up because you credited capital expense is an equity account that's going to go down you might be saying that doesn't make any sense yes yes it does simply put you are showing the expense on the income statement although the overall equity is the same because you recorded an expense and you offset it with capital but you still have to show it i know it doesn't make any sense because there is really no expense to the company until you exercise that's the truth because if you never exercise if they gave you those options and the stock price never went above 2500 there's it's like a tree falling into the forest no one cares nothing happened nevertheless you still have to debit an expense you record an expense and you credit a capital so it does hit your income statement but at the same time you increase your equity okay now how would you expense the options you have two options you could use a straight line which i showed you earlier or uh, you could use straight line or you can amortize the expense, the compensation expense in tranches, that means in pieces, same as US GAAP. Most of the time we use the straight line method. When I teach it, I always teach it using the straight line method. Now, if you are looking for this and just like, I need more about stock options, go to my chapter 16, Intermediate Accounting, and you have a whole thing about stock options in case you know you felt you know this is not enough for me about stock options okay let's take a look at an example to see how this work let's assume a corporation grants stock options with a fair value of a hundred thousand a grant means they give their employees the option to buy and the value of this option is one hundred thousand okay how did we come up with one hundred thousand it's given to you they told you it's worth one hundred thousand fifty percent of the fifty percent vest at the end of year one and fifty percent at the end of year two it, in other words, you have to work two years for this company. Under IFRS, compensation cost associated with the first tranche is fully allocated to expense in year one. So simply put, we have 100,000, 50%, and 50%. That's the vesting. Under IFRS, for year one, we're going we're gonna to vest this 100%, and we're going to we're gonna vest 50% of year two. Okay, 50% of year two. As a result, the amount of compensation expense in year one is 75,000, which is 50,000 plus 50% 50 of year two. F have 50,000 times 50%. 50 and the amount of compensation expense to be recognized in year two is 25,000. So year one, we're gonna debit expense 75,000, credit equity or capital 75,000. Year two, the expense is debited 25, and capital is credited 25 okay 
The same pattern of compensation recognition would be acceptable under US GAAP, which is we could use you could use this for US GAAP or under US GAAP, we can go ahead and use the straight line and expense 50,000 and 50,000. Okay. Let's take a look now at the cash settled share based transaction. Now they are cash settled. Remember cash settle means when we settle them and this is the second type of share base we've been talking about equity based now we're going to settle it using cash so rather than issuing stocks we're going to go ahead and give you cash okay so here's what happened an entity might provide employee with stock appreciation right in which they are entitled to receive cash payment when the entity stock price increase above a predetermined level what does that mean it means they will tell you right now the stock price is twenty dollars that's the current price they will tell you if the stock price reaches thirty dollars guess what we're going to give you value of 100 shares simply put you have three thousand dollar in your pocket okay so they're gonna set they're not gonna give you 100 shares they are not gonna give you 100 shares they're gonna give you one three thousand dollar in cash that's what they're gonna give you okay so this type of transaction would result in the recognition of a liability why because they have to pay you cash they don't have to issue stocks for you and it would it'd be an expense we'll debit an expense credit the liability how is the liability measured it's measured at the fair value of the share appreciation right using an option price and model simply put option price and model means aka and aka in accounting given to you it's going to be given to you we don't have to worry about this so and it means sometimes the the option price and model goes up sometimes it goes down and you have to adjust that liability up or down under us gap we can look at how we trade it under us gap until the liability is settled it must be remeasured at each balance sheet date with the change reflected in net income so remember i told you three thousand if the stock price go to forty dollars now i owe you four thousand well, I owe you more. I have an additional 1000 Under US GAAP, certain cash settled share based transactions are classified as equity. These transactions must be classified liability under IFRS. So under US GAAP, they say what you're doing is really this is an equity transaction. Under IFRS, it says this is a liability. The third type of settlement is the choice of settlement. Okay? Either you can choose of settlement, it means you can either get it in cash or get it in stocks. Or equity allow the entity to choose between equity settlement and cash settlement so you could either get when once it's once once it's mature once it's due you could either settle it in equity or settle it in cash give them cash or give them equity okay the entity must treat the transaction as a cash settled share based payment if it only has a present obligation to settle in cash if it has to be settled in cash then it becomes a cash otherwise the entity will treat it as an equity transaction Okay, so simply put, they'll decide. Now, assuming this is the entity deciding. Now, when the terms of the share-based transaction allow the supplier, now the supplier decides, the supplier tells you, I want it to be settled in cash or I want it to be settled in equity. Okay, the, when they have the allowed to choose, when they are allowed to choose between equity settlement or cash settlement, the entity has issued a compound financial statement, a, not a financial statement, a compound financial instrument. In other words, we have two financial instruments. We have a debt and we have equity. So now we account for the transaction as two instruments. We owe them money, which is debt, and we could also owe them equity. Okay. The debt component, how do we determine the debt component? The debt component must be measured at fair value at each balance sheet date with a change in fair value reflected in net income. So the debt value could go up, the debt value could, could go down. We have to report that gain or loss in net income. If the supplier of services and goods choose to receive settlement in cash, the cash payment is applied against the debt component. Obviously, that means I have to settle it in cash. So I'll have to pay you cash. This is how it's going to be settled. The equity component remain in equity. If the supplier choose to receive settlement and equity, the debt is transferred to equity. Basically, we remove the debt, we debit the debt, and we credit equity. The best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example. Okay. Let's take a look at this example to see how this all works together. So we have a company on January 1st issued 100 stock options with an exercise price of 18 to five employees, which is in total 500 options. What does that mean? It means the employees, they can buy the stock at any time at $18. So if you if you receive those options, you can buy the stock at 18, which is you're going to have to pay $1,800, but you can buy it at 18 whether the price is $50 or the price is $100. Okay? So you're giving them the option to buy it. Now, the employee can choose to settle the option either 
in, ca in shares of stock so they can get the shares or they can settle it in cash. In cash means they, they would receive cash and the cash value would equal to the intrinsic value of the option on the vesting date. Now, what is the intrinsic value? Remember, you can buy the, the, the exercise price. This is the exercise price is 18. This option is worthless to you unless the stock price is above 18. If the stock price is 15, this option is worthless. It means it's worth nothing. Why? Because I can buy the stock at 15. Why would I pay 18? When is this option worth something to you when it's above 18? If the stock is 25, guess what? The difference between the exercise and the current price is $7. This is called the intrinsic, intrinsic value. This is the intrinsic value of the stock. Now the stock is worth something, intrinsic value. The intrinsic value is $7. So you can either sell it in intrinsic value or you can buy the stock at $18. The option vests on December 2nd, year two, after the employees has completed two years of service. So when are you, when, when do you qualify? It's, you have to put two years worth of, the, worth of service for you to be able to exercise it. Now the company will, will recognize the expense over two years Okay, but you have to wait two years in order to be able to exercise. So one employee resigned in year one. Um, okay, one employee resigned in year one and the company continued to assume an overall forfeiture, forfeiture rate of 20%. So, so the company expect only four employees would remain because if you don't put the two years, simply put, for you to get the options, you have to work year one, you have to work year two. After you put those two years worth of work, Remember, we had five employees. After you put those two years, the option will vest. Guess what? One of the employees left, so we have four employees there. Okay? Because if you leave before the before you put the time, you don't get the options. So when they give you the options, you have to make sure you, you're aware of the date. The date, um, you're aware of the vesting date. The vesting date means after that date, you can exercise the options. As expected, four employees vest on December uh, 31st, year two and the exercise and the uh, the exercise and their stock options obviously they all ex they all they all vested the share price and the fair value is as follow so here's what happened when we granted the options the share price was 20. the fair value of the cash settlement consideration alternative is 10. Um, december 31st year one the share price one was 26. the fair value cash settlement alternative is 12. in other words we'll give you 12 dollars if it if it if it mature, if it vests today, December 31st, the share price is 30 and the fair value of the cash settlement is 12. And this is perfect because, you know, you can buy it for 30, the option is 18, so you'll have $12. So this is like perfect value. Okay, now the question is how much would the company incur an expense? Because remember, the company granted those options, granted 500 options to their, to their employees and each option they can buy at $18. However, the fair value, the fair value of the stock option will not be known, okay, until the end of the year. So at the end of the year, we have to figure out what's the fair value cash settlement. In other words, if we have to settle this option today, and this is will be given, this will be given, this will be given, this will be given. What we're saying is the fair value is eleven dollars. If we have to settle it today, the fair value is eleven dollars. We're not gonna settle it. Okay, but if we have to do it, we have to pay $11. Well, okay, if we have to pay $11 and we have 500 options, well, we have 5,500 in cost. Now, now we're assuming how many? We're assuming all 500 options are exercised, but that's not true. We're only gonna only 80% because one employee left. We expect one employee to leave, whether they left or not, but this is what we can assume. So basically what we're gonna have to do is we only have an expense of 4,400 as of the end of year one. As, at the end of the year one, we have 4,400. Now we're gonna take this 4,400 and spread it over two years. So every year we're gonna create an expense of 2,200. So let's see. So this is the computation that I just made. Then we're gonna debit compensation expense for 2200 we're going to credit share based payment liability 2200 now under us gap we usually credit capital but this is how do we do it under I ifrs so year one this is the entry for year one we, rec we recognize 2000 of expense and 2200 of liability now again for us gap we have credited some sort of a capital account 
some sort of a capital account okay I told you earlier we we offset it to capital under IFRS we offset to liability at December 31st year one the fair value of each option equal to $12 which is the share price was $30 the exercise price is 18 it means right now right now any employee can make $12 can make $12 from this trade okay now you might be saying how, how, how why was it 12 year one how did you compute this it's given to you it's given to you but but year two once it vests now you could just compare the share price to the exercise price so the fair value of the liability if we have twelve dollars intrinsic value times five hundred option that's six thousand but remember we're only gonna get eighty percent of the six thousand we're responsible for eighty percent therefore the expense is four thousand eight hundred okay so the amount to be recognized as compensation expense in year two is four thousand eight hundred in total for the whole option minus we recognize two thousand two hundred so we have to recognize two thousand six hundred simply put we debit uh, compensation expense two thousand six hundred credit share based liability two thousand uh, share based liability two thousand six hundred you might be saying why don't we go two thousand two hundred year one two thousand two hundred year two what happened is the stock price went up the stock price let me show you the stock price went from weight went from 26 the stock price the stock price went from 26 to 30 so the stock price went up as the stock price went up the fair value of the cash settlement went up it means we have more expenses in year one we had 2200 but the value of the option in year two becomes in total becomes in total uh, 4800 of which we recognize 2200 in year one so we have to recognize the remaining which is 2600 in year two so this is what we do before they actually come to exercise in other words before the executives comes to exercise now we're going to look at the exercise so this is what the company so this is year one compensation expense for the company this is year two so the company already recorded their expense okay now let's see what's going to happen when the executives come to the company and they either they ask for the cash or they ask or they want to exercise their option okay accounting for exercise for the stock option under the two settlement alternative is as follows the first thing we're going to look at is cash settlement and let's look at the cash settlement simply put the cash settlement remember we have we already recorded share ba share payment based liability let me just do this on the previous slide so this way you can see it share payment based liability 2200 2600 well guess what if we need to reduce this liability we have to debit this liability 4800 to make it go down to zero in credit cash so the cash so the cash uh, so the cash uh, settlement is pretty easy we debit the share based liability share based share based liability share payment i just say share based liability 4800 we credit cash 4800 now the executives they they may not want the cash they actually they want to settle it in equity in other words they want to buy the stock they want to buy the stock well if they want to buy the stock they have to pay money they have to pay cash how much cash will they have to pay well there are 400 options they have to pay 18 dollars in cash so they have to pay the company 4000 seven thousand two hundred with debit cash seven thousand two hundred then we have to remove this share based liability so we're going to debit share payment based liability four thousand eight hundred this stock has a par value of one therefore we credit common stock four hundred and anything left is a pick or paid in capital which is eleven thousand six hundred so this is if the transaction was 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 settled in equity simply put the executives will have to pay us cash we remove the liability that we created as we as we were uh, as we were uh, recording the expense we credit common stock and we credit additional paid in capital why did we credit common stock 400 it's the number of shares this is how much you credit common stock times the par value and anything left this is a plug figure now under us gap once again under us gap we will not have a liability we will not have this account we have an equity account we will have an equity account okay 
we will have an equity account. Remember, US GAAP will have equity account. We'll consider this as equity transaction. IFRS will consider it a liability transaction. So simply put, let me clarify one point because I kind of spoke about spoke about uh, earlier here. Let me just uh, I just want to make sure. Okay, as compensation expenses recognized, it's offset by an additional paid in capital. This is U.S. GAAP. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.